GoFarm was founded five years ago by myself and I was fortunate to be introduced to the Costa family and Robert Costa's uh, our chairman and the Costa family is a, uh, an investor in the business alongside my own. Um, quote there from Rob, which I think, um, you know, it's important to, important to the way that we think uh, think about what we do and, and we're very strong believers in, in the future of Australian agriculture. Uh, I'm fifth generation, Rob's um, multi-generational too, albeit coming from horticulture and, and agribusiness. And uh, I just thought that was worth, worth posting before we get too far along the road. So GoFarms, we're a Melbourne-based business. We're a small team there. We're about, about 10 and, and growing steadily. Um, it's Australian-owned and it's all private investment capital. Our focus is very much on being a productivity investor. So we look for underutilised and undercapitalised assets and seek to uh, deploy smart capital and smart people and smart technologies. Um, what drives us is really to, is to find those opportunities where we, can, where we can have a material impact on productivity, a material impact on earnings and, and by extension, a material impact on, on capital values. Uh, at present, we've got about 46,000 hectares under, under control and uh, as indicated, that's across a number of, of commodities. We do focus on plant-based industries only, and that's, I guess, a, a, bias, a bias towards our own knowledge set and experience, rather than uh, a slight against livestock. So our purpose, we're guided by that, and it's threefold, and, and uh, it holds real meaning to us. The first is that we're about improving Australian agriculture, and that's... that's um, central to the way we think. We're also about creating wealth for our investors because if we don't do that, it's a fairly short game. And, uh, and the third pillar of our purpose is about leaving a positive legacy for the assets and communities in which we invest. And so any investment or acquisition we look at has to pass muster with, with, these, with these three pillars. So we're talking about transformational investment, but first I just thought I'd... Uh, restate the case for the transformational opportunity that exists. 140 million people entering the middle class around the, around the globe this year, predicted to go to 170 million in five years' time. In the very, uh, the very near future, 2019, the expectation is there's going to be 3.2 billion people around the world in the middle class. It'll be the first time in, in modern history that um, there's been more people living in the middle class or, or in the rich class than, uh, than in the poor. Add to that the $35 trillion worth of spending that that middle class um, conducts each year, and that's about a third of, of global, global, um, the global economy, and that that's growing at a faster rate than global GDP. Add to that the fact that 88%, whoop, 88% um, of the next billion people is at our doorstep in, in Asia. So our conclusion is it's a transformational event and that requires transformational investment. So we're very much about looking to build investment grade assets. What's an investment grade asset? Well to us, uh, we define it as something that's got proven and compelling earnings, it's data rich, it possesses quality natural resources, it's specialised in its commodity focus, it delivers appreciable scale, and it's supported by proven on-ground management. In terms of uh, making investment decisions, we apply the following uh, stages. First is purpose, and I've touched on that. The second is um, applied commercial research, and out of a small head office team of 10, we've got three staff dedicated to commercial research activities, so uh, looking at opportunities for land use change, looking at the role that um, technology might have to, to unlock um, opportunities. In addition to that, we have a, an independent advisory committee too, the GoFarm Commercial Research Advisory Panel, which has the acronym of CRAP. Now, the members of... The members of GoFarm Crap aren't that pleased about the acronym. They prefer to call themselves a committee rather than a panel. 
and I'm sticking with committee and I've got naming rights, or oh, panel rather. Um, so from the research comes the investment strategy and then of course um, the hard work of, of finding the assets that support our strategies and then acquiring, bringing them on board and, and leading the transformation in whatever shape that might be. All well and good. What's that look like? I thought I'd just run you through uh, you know, the family album of, of what we've got going presently, just for some context. So the first one's a greenfield development, MAFRA. It's a property that sits just south of Bell Reynold on the Murrumbidgee River. Um, our research had concluded, uh, dating back to 2013, that global demand for, for almonds was, was real. It was outstripping supply. Compound annual growth rates over a decade of, of near double digits. There was a significant supply risk because of the geographical concentration of almond production, nearly 85% of the world's almonds coming out of California. Uh, there was the California water crisis occurring and, of course, the change in legislation that's, that's, um, that's happening in, in parallel. And so we could see that um, not only were those pressures there, but to meet this growing supply, there was going to be the need for greenfield developments and was placing more investment in California the answer or, or, or would or should we look outside of that region? Australia's the next next best destination, Syria's the third best, and we weren't keen on putting money there. Um, so we set about scanning the, the, the um, Murrumbidgee and Murray River from Narandra through to, through to Renmark, effectively. So we've acquired there nearly 5,500 acre um, grain property. That's what it looked like uh, at purchase, and that was in uh, 2015. Uh, at the time, it was that property was running as a family operation. It was one of three three farms that they were they were um, growing on and, and basically supporting half a full time um, position and generating about a million dollars worth of revenue. Our first stage, whilst we're going through licensing and approvals for, and uh, and the planning for the development, was actually to to bring it into the 21st century just from a, a dry land farming perspective. So um, going through the process of fence removal and creating um, or introducing no-till and, and uh, capturing the benefits of width and speed that, that exist in broadacre farming. Uh, and then going from there with approvals in hand and, uh, and finance in the bank, moving on to the bit, let's build it type phase. Now, during the uh, reconfiguration of that asset, we created 60 jobs on, on that farm for effectively a nine-month period in phase one, and now we've got the same 60 people back building stage two. Um, there's the central water source for that property, fed from the Murrumbidgee River. There are the trees as of about two weeks ago, so they were planted in August last year. So what's that make them? About six months old. And a few stats on that project. So there's 540,000 almond trees being planted over, over two years, 5,000 kilometres of, of drip tube. Importantly, the people aspect, 60 jobs created during construction. There's 12 full-time employees on farm presently and there'll be about another eight going after stage two. Um, $80 million commitment. As I said, there was uh, supporting, supporting half a full-time employee uh, before we took it over, and it's going to support 20 um, within 12 months. And in a township of 2,500 people, it's a, an important um, contributor to, to the local economy. That commitment now is for the next 30 years of the life of the orchard, and, and we hope that um, a following 30 beyond that. And so. You know, this project's ticking a few boxes for us in terms of improving Australian agriculture, contributing to exports, and we heard earlier that almonds are now the largest horticultural export for Australia. Uh, we're creating some wealth for investors, and we're leaving a positive legacy on the asset in that local community. Uh, another project, uh, Piambi, which was a brownfield development. Um, it's over the river in Victoria, um, fronting the, the Murray River. And that was a conversion of a, um, a pre-existing corporate vineyard. It was um, about 2,300 acres under, under vines, um, 
high water prices, wrong varieties, wrong configuration, wrong rootstocks, and an irrigation system that was um, inappropriate for the landscape. And so it was a, uh, a floundering or failing asset when we, when we got hold of it. A little glimpse on the left-hand side as to what it looked like the day we, the day we got hold of it. So we, we acquired that in, in August and uh, immediately went to work on it. Um, in just under 12 months, we removed 1.7 million vines, 600,000 treated pine posts, which were repurposed, of all things. They went out of, out of our vineyard and up the road 150 kilometres to Mildura to re-establish a vineyard. Um, 9,000 kilometres of wire, 3,000 kilometres of drip tube. There was a hell of a lot of work went on. There was 130 jobs created during that 12 months to, to repurpose that vineyard. Some of the activities there as we, we move from, from vineyard to, to orchard. Those were the trees uh, last July, just planted, drip tubes out, stakes and guards. And there they are about a week ago. So moving along. Um, that project's 200,000 trees, and we'll run through some of those stats. It's a $40 million commitment. Again, an asset that was, that was failing and we could see the opportunity to, to reposition it. So again, ticking, ticking the boxes in terms of our purpose. Uh, moving away from horticulture to back, to, um, back to agriculture, um, we've, got a, we've got a property near Narandra, uh, Marunda in fact, um, and it's, it's an aggregation of a couple of properties uh, it was a multi-generational asset, a very well-established family, um, the old succession story. Um, family was scattered around the world, very little interest in, uh, in farming. And, uh, and I suppose as the, the incumbents aged, so too did investment in, in the property. It's a beautiful property, um, and by no means was it, was it rough, but by no means was it operating to its capacity. So we thought we saw that one as a as a fairly um, fairly low risk development play, for want of a better description. So it was um, a mixed enterprise. There was some some irrigation, there was some dry land farming, and there was a um, a wool and, and beef operation. As we do, we got in and um, made a mess. So we pulled out sixty kilometres of internal fencing, and we. Ripped up about 9,000 hectares of underperforming pasture. Uh, we ran around with the EM38 machine and did all our, our um, uh, soil testing to determine what was what was missing and where. And we established all our different trial strips as well. There's been about six and a half thousand ton of lime and gypsum go out under under variable rate. Um, there's been 60 kilometres of internal road network established. For, for efficient movement from a central farm hub out to, out to the field. Um, in the process, we went from 53 asymmetrical paddocks and laneways to 13 management zones, um, covering just short of 10,000 hectares of, of arable land. You can see there, that's, uh, as the boys call it, the east-west superhighway, which is 15 kilometres long, and then uh, farming north-south on 7K runs. So again, trying to capture the benefits of variable rate technology, precision ag, but doing it with, with width and speed. That's a bit more technology, the weed it. We've partnered there with a local, um, local farming family that are, that are very good operators and, and know what they're about. I've covered that. So just in conclusion, Rowan, um, back, to, back to purpose. So uh, transformational investment, we're, we're doing that with the prudent application of, of capital and technology and, and good people. And I think we're satisfied at this stage that we're meeting, uh, meeting our purpose in terms of making a contribution to Australian agriculture that's meaningful, creating wealth for our investors, and uh, leaving a, a positive legacy for the assets in which we invest.